Hi and welcome to day 12 of Wave. I'm Daniel Bogdanoff streaming live from Keysight in Colorado Springs. It's a bittersweet day for us here at Keysight. It's the last day of Wave, but that also means we're giving away the last test gear bundle. I'll also be doing some live Q&A at the end of the video, so make sure to put your questions in chat or in the comments. And it's also not too late to get an entry for today's drawing if you're watching live. Make sure to go to wave.keysight.com by the time I draw today's winner and you will be entered in that drawing. Just like every day in WAVE, we also have a test gear tip. Over the last couple weeks of WAVE, we'd have, ha, we've had a couple questions about how to choose the right oscilloscope bandwidth. So for today's tip, I thought we'd take a minute and learn a little something about bandwidth, which is actually a topic that's broader than just oscilloscopes. Let's take a look. Today we're going to take a look at a different way to think about bandwidth. In test gear 101, you hear that bandwidth is simply the highest frequency component that you can measure or produce. For example, a 100 MHz oscilloscope can measure a 100 MHz sine wave. But this signal is going to be attenuated by 3 dB or so, because in test gear 201, you hear that the signal will actually roll off a bit near the maximum bandwidth of your system. In fact, you can actually see frequencies that exceed the bandwidth of your scope. On the scope, we're looking at a 30 MHz 5 volt peak to peak signal. If I turn on my scope's 20 MHz bandwidth limit, we can see that I'm still measuring 30 MHz, but my peak-to-peak -peak voltage has dropped to about 3.5 volts peak-to-peak. -peak. So we can still see 30 MHz, but the signal is attenuated. The same is true for the output of a function generator, but it's harder to see that in practice because the software won't let you set a higher frequency than the generator's stated output. On a 100 MHz generator, you simply can't turn the frequency setting any higher than 100 MHz. So this begs the question, why don't we, the designers, simply say the generator can produce a higher frequency and limit the amplitude at those extended frequencies? It would certainly make our specs look a lot better. The answer is this. Bandwidth isn't actually about hertz, how many times per second your signal goes up and down. It's about rise time. It's about how fast your signal goes up and down. Edge speed. Think about it like this. A delivery driver has a car that can travel at 100 kilometers per hour max. He has to make a delivery 50 kilometers away, so it's going to take him an hour to deliver the package and get back to the warehouse. His frequency is one delivery per hour. Next, he has to deliver a package only 25 kilometers away. It'll only take him 30 minutes to deliver the package, and his frequency will be two deliveries per hour. His frequency doubled, but his speed didn't change. This is analogous to your test gear. The frequency measurement or output is like the delivery rate, while the rise time is like the driver's speed. Sure, he can deliver more packages if the delivery is closer together, but the travel speed doesn't actually change. Another way to think about this is in terms of frequency components. Bandwidth refers to the frequency components when you look at the frequency domain, but the rise time or edge speed in the time domain. Watch my edge speed change as I toggle on and off my scope's bandwidth limit. I'm even going to crank in a little bit so we can see it more clear. With the bandwidth limit on, my edge speed is slower. With my bandwidth limit off, my edge speed is faster. For systems with a Gaussian response, the conversion formula is rise time equals 0.34 divided by bandwidth. If the scope has a non-Gaussian or maximally flat response, the calculation changes, but that's a discussion for another day. For more oscilloscope tips, check out the ebook Six Essential Tips for Getting the Most Out of Your Oscilloscope or the app note Eight Hints for Better Scope Probing. And that ebook is over in the Wave Library, and make sure you get it quick because that library is going away on Monday night. So make sure to save off any and all app notes or ebooks that you haven't gotten around to reading yet, or if you want to reference them later. And also, even though Wave is ending today, you can still enter the Test to Impress contest until March 31st, and we'll announce and show the winners on our YouTube channel, Keysight Labs, on or before April 15th. So make sure you subscribe to get notifications for when that video goes live. And if you want to see last year's winners, we're going to put a link for that in the video description. And now it's time to draw today's winners. And I say winners because the schematic challenge questions were solved this week. So we're also going to give away three 1000X series scopes. So I'm going to draw four names. And the first winner will be the winner of the bench bundle that, or the test gear bundle that can win either an RF bundle or a bench bundle. The other three winners are going to win the 1000X series scope. So also, if you have any questions for the upcoming QA, make sure to put them in chat now. Today's winners are, uh, the winner of the bundle, their choice of bundle, is Christopher Taberski. Congratulations, Christopher. We'll be in touch with you shortly. And then the winners of the 1000X series are Perry Turner, Jung Ilsung, and Shig Shigeru Idu. Congratulations. We'll be in touch with all of you shortly. 
Before we go into QA, I also want to give a shout out to the team that made Wave happen. I get the fun job, but putting together an event like this takes a lot of work. So a huge thanks to all of the Keysight folks that helped out. In no particular order, thank you, Sarah, for handling the website, Nick and Jen for getting the RF tips and library together, Ali for all your help wrangling people and coordinating pretty much everything, Aaron for making tests, uh, for making the schematic challenge happen, and for keeping our Instagram channel awesome. You should go check out our Instagram channel. Thank you, Boone, for handling the thrilling job of paperwork and legal liaising, it's liaising a word, and Robert for any interference and keeping Wave on track, Richie for this awesome setup and for the AV work, CS and Titbin, and Bernard for helping out with the bench ebook and bench library, Leah for helping out with social and communications, and of course, Marie and Jeff for funding Wave. So obviously a lot of work goes into this and you'll recognize some of those names if you've been with us for a while. Um, a lot of those people also will have videos on this channel in the coming months, so make sure you're subscribed. Wave is just kind of a small part of what this channel is about. Um, so that's actually the end of our live stream formal. It's time for some Q&A. Make sure you subscribe to the Keysight Labs channel. We also will have new videos on this channel every Tuesday and probably even more often than that. If you're into podcasts, check out the Double East Talk Tech podcast in your favorite podcast engine or over on the Keysight Podcast YouTube channel. And make sure to follow us on Facebook and Instagram. There, Graham, there are links for all of those in the description. Okay, Q&A time. All right, looks like I've had some in chat. Um, someone asked, why doesn't the Field Fox have a touch screen? That's a really good question. Um, we really designed that to be super rugged and durable in the field, so um, I don't remember what the specific IP rating on it is, but adding a touch screen limits how durable that equipment can be. So the glass is, is on that screen is actually pretty like military grade glass. Um, so can you perform real-time spectrum analysis with a graded value display on a scope? Um, yeah. So the 3000T ha on the FFT, you can do like color grading. I think that answers that question. Um, on the terms and conditions, it stated that the deadline for test to impress is 16th of March. It should be 31st of March. We are going to accept entries until the 31st of March. Um, I've talked with our lawyers about typos in the terms and conditions before, so that's something we can do. March 31st for test to impress. Can I send commands directly from a microcontroller to the 33600A power supply without having an API doing it or spending lots of memory generating an image? Um, and the team got back on that. That was asked earlier in the chat. Someone said you can send triggers and step through the list mode, which is a list of predefined voltages. So you can basically send triggers from a microcontroller and have a preloaded set of voltages you want to send and step through them that way. Um, Let's see, what else is there? I'm in the chat now. Can bandwidth limit, um, this is a good question. Someone asked, could the bandwidth limit be described in terms of sample rate? So sample rate is basically how fast the ADC is sampling, and bandwidth is, is the frequency response of the system. So sample rate is more of an ADC thing. It doesn't really, like, they're, they're, they're separate. They're not the same thing. Um, so you can have the fastest sample rate in the world, but 20 megahertz of bandwidth, and you're only going to get 20 megahertz. That being said, if you undersample, it's going to counteract any effect of having a fast bandwidth it uh, does. So in, you know, Nyquist says you should have a sample rate of twice your bandwidth to get full bandwidth. In the real world, we generally recommend at least two and a half times your bandwidth for your sample rate. So that's like, like if you had a one gigahertz scope, the bare minimum sampling rate you'd want to have is 2.5 gigahertz or 2.5 giga samples a second. Um, you may even want to look higher than that, depending on what you're doing. Um, what else? What will happen when we feed higher hertz than the oscilloscope can process? So it's going to start attenuating that signal. I actually wrote um, on our blog a while back, there's an article about like hacking the scopes of uh, frequency counter, and it, it's actually a remnant of bandwidth. So go check out the like scope hack that we have in our blog, and you can see what happens if you pipe in a signal that's way too fast for the scope. Um, it just, spoiler alert, it basically is a sine wave that gets smaller and smaller. Um, what else? Is there a MegaZoom 5 in the R&D lab? I obviously can't comment about ongoing R&D work that we haven't announced. Uh, what else? Someone says, yes, we're always creating new probes. Um, other questions? Oh, there's a bunch of questions here. Okay. Um, where do we want to go? 
Uh, if you have questions, make sure to put them in the chat. Um, someone says, Ergon says, thanks, Daniel, for expanding on my question. I really need an arbitrary waveform generator instead. Um, yeah, arbitrary waveform generators are super useful. Um, we've built in function generate. Oh, someone put a link to that blog in the chat. And we're also going to put that in the bottom of the video. Um, so we have the function generator he's asking now if the function generator on the scope can do ARBs. Uh, it can, but I don't believe it does it on the 1000X. It has it definitely on the 3, 4, and 6. Someone's going to be looking into that for me. Um, so the, we do have that on some of them, but not all of them. And um, yeah, is it, can you develop custom apps for the 1000X? Um, unfortunately, we don't offer like third-party plugins or anything for the scope at this point, although that's something I've been pushing for. I think an open source scope would be awesome. Um, any other questions? Another question about test to impress. Uh, a couple things about test to impress is the video has to be two minutes or less. Um, and we're going to judge it for a combination of a few things. So the prizes for the test to impress contest, the grand prize is a, a full bench or RF bundle. The runner up prizes are 1000 X's. So in the past, we've used test to impress to give away some highly, like higher end, you know, six gigahertz scopes. This year, we're doing a blend of the two. So your project doesn't have to be quite as technical as it had to be in previous years to count as a winner. Um, Someone says, I have a function generator. The square wave at 12 megahertz became a sine wave. Do you know why? Yeah, so if you buy a function generator, so this one uh, is a, what bandwidth is this? The one we're giving away, I believe, is like an 80 or a, is 120 gigahertz. So the one we're giving away, or we gave away, is a 120 hertz, 120 megahertz function generator, generator, which means it can generate a 120 megahertz sine wave. It cannot generate a 120 megahertz square wave. So basically, the bandwidth spec of a function generator tells you what fundamental frequency it can make. Um, so if you need to create like a 12 megahertz square wave, you would need a function generator that's at least three times that to get the third harmonic. So probably like a 40 or 50, uh, you know, technically a 36 megahertz function generator, but probably a 40 or 50 if you're trying to create a 12 gigahertz or 12 megahertz square wave. Um, someone said, I noticed that I didn't find any winner from the comments of the schematic challenge comments section. Um, the schematic challenge was not a contest. It was part of the overall sweepstakes. So we drew winners for the schematic challenge out of the whole thing. So those of you who helped out, you basically helped out the whole community get a better chance of winning. Uh, why are the wave app notes going away? Couldn't these be archived? Um, they are trying to keep the wave website up and running year round was going to be more of a challenge than we were ready to take on. That being said, a lot of the app notes and ebooks that we create are available online. So if you know what you're looking for, you can search for them. You can search like, you know, key site function generator app note and find all of our app notes for function generators. So just because they're not in the wave library doesn't mean they're gone forever. Just that collection page is going away. Um, can you upgrade the, def the fan in an oscilloscope without voiding warranty? Technically, opening it up and changing anything will void the warranty. Um, that being said, we do use pretty quiet fans. I know some of you are more sensitive to audible noise than others. Um, but if you look like on par, we use fans that are much quieter than industry standard. Um, what else? I got another question here. Um, answered that one already. Is the oh, this is an interesting question. Is the firmware for the 1000, 2000, 3000, and 4000 on the same development branch? Kind of and kind of not. So some of the like trying to load all of the 4000X code into a 1000X would cause you know space issues and drive prices up. And obviously we designed the 1000X to be a low cost oscilloscope. Um, so there's a lot, they share a lot of similarities, but there's different branches for some of the different products. I think the 4000 and 3000T are on the same branch, though, so they do share code. Um, someone wants RGB LED fans in my scope. That would be fun. Um, yeah, someone's, hmm, someone, uh, Marcus Official says he was able to open his and change the fan without breaking any seals. Um, it's never recommended to monitor your oscilloscope. That being said, you know. Uh, well, we have giveaways later this year. You'll have to stick around and find out. Uh, OK, here's a question. Can you use a Schmidt trigger to square up a sine wave, get more square out of solar function generator? Um, the answer, yes, you can generate your own output circuit. Uh, oh, 
You can design your own output circuit. Um, yes, you can use your Schmidt trigger to queue up your function generator, but that may change like input impedance and things like that. So you can do it, just use it with caution. Um, and obviously that'll only work for square wave. Um, is there an option to enable Graticule labeling like on the 3000T and the 2000A series? Not at this time. Um, I'm a big fan of the Graticule labeling, so that's something that I'll also be pushing with R&D, and I think it looks really cool and is really helpful. Um, we also have it on all the Infinium scopes. So Graticule labels, especially on the Infinium scopes, we have like cursors, and you can do measurement callouts right on the screen on those cursors, like how far apart are these, and get values like that. So um, I'd encourage you to check that out as well. Um, Someone says, how does auto scale decide if the signal channel goes for AC or DC mode? So on the oscilloscopes, there's AC coupling and DC coupling. And I think the question is, if you hit auto scale, how does the scope know whether to go into DC coupling or AC coupling? I believe it default, it's not going to change from what setting you have already. Um, or it's going to default to DC coupling. I don't know off the top of my head. We can probably try it out. Um, might as well. So I'm going to plug this in and boot it up. I uh, have a plug here. If all the lights go out, it's because we have too many things plugged into one outlet. Um, so we'll boot that up, and while that's booting, basically AC coupling acts like a 10 megahertz high-pass filter, so you can filter out any DC components. And that way you can scale in further on a signal that's offset. So if you had like a 1-volt peak-to-peak ripple on a 10-volt rail or something like that, you can look at that. Um, you can look at that 1-volt peak-to-peak ripple without blowing out the dynamic range of your scope. Um, so I'm going to try something here. I'm going to come around to the front and are we on a close up. Um, so I'm going to, I don't know, I'm going to put it in AC mode and see what happens. So you select the channel and the coupling is AC. And if I hit auto scale, let's see what happens. Auto scale. And then if I go back to channel one, it stayed in AC mode. So it looks like it's going to stay in whatever AC or DC coupling mode you had already. Um, I'm certain it's not going to change you out of that because that would throw a ton of people off. Other questions? Someone says, great way to end your vacation time. Awesome. Um, OK, there's some discussion about Linux versus other options. Um, someone does say that the fan noise, fan noise, uh, fan noise. OK. Anything else? It looks like we're running light on questions, so we're going to Call it a day. Thank you all so much for being a part of Wave. It's been an extra special event for me and the team. Uh, make sure you subscribe to the Keysight Labs YouTube channel. Check us out on Facebook, Instagram. You can always ask me questions on Twitter at Keysight underscore Daniel. And I will see you next time.